Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the REDCap 51 telescope and why I think it's the best scope that I've ever owned. So if you want to learn more, then uh, keep watching. So, uh, my astrophotography journey started around back in sort of May, June 2020 time. Um, I was using a digital SLR, I was using uh, some standard lenses that I already had, and I was just sort of beginning to um, image the night sky. Not necessarily deep sky objects to begin with, but uh, eventually I moved into that later in the year. Um, but towards the back end of 2020, um, I decided to... Uh, dive in and purchase a Skywatcher 200p Newtonian telescope and um, a Skywatcher EQ5 Pro mount. It was all second hand and it came with other bits and pieces as well, which was great. Um, <laughs> maybe in hindsight, not the best scope to start out with, um, but uh, yeah, it, it got me interested further and um, I had a ton of problems, but uh, that's not what this video is about. Um, after that, I think a good um, probably six months or so later, I, I decided and realised that I was having problems with um, guiding the beast that is the 200p, mainly because the mount wasn't up to it. Uh, so I decided to purchase something, uh, a 600mm uh, refractor telescope, which uh, was a lot lighter, more manageable with that particular mount and uh, gave me a wider field of view that basically meant that I would be able to capture some of the targets that I wanted to. So uh, fast forward to uh, November 2021 and I started to look for uh, another telescope that was a, a lot more wide wide field um, and that's where the, uh, the good old red cat came in. Um, so 250 millimeter um, scope uh, with a, I think the aperture is 51 uh, millimeters, which is where the, uh, the the 51 comes from, which is a focal ratio of, of 4.9. So it's it's faster than my um, my F7 uh, Skywatcher ATED Pro, um, and a tiny bit faster than the massive Newtonian, which is about F5. Yeah, purchased a um, scope from uh, Rother Valley Optics. Uh, they've always been a fantastic company to, uh, to to buy things from and helpful with advice and things like that. Um, and sort of had to work out, okay, I need um, and <laughs> some other things. It's never just simple with just one thing that you, uh, you purchase. You have to then buy some other things that go with it. Um, and yeah, essentially the, the scope itself, uh, you get the, the actual main scope, but you don't get this uh, handle at the top and you obviously don't get the guide scope, you don't get the camera either, uh, or the guide camera. So you literally get the, the raw scope. Not, not a problem. Um, it just meant that I didn't have all of the equipment to be able to use this as a second rig. So I purchased a, a few other bits and pieces as well. Um, but yeah, the purpose of this video is to really go through uh, specific items on this telescope and why I think it's uh, a lot better than the other ones that I've got. So if we just uh, dive into some uh, specifications of this um, of this particular telescope, um, it's it's called a prime basically because uh, it's only one focal length, so that is uh, two hundred and fifty millimeters. Um, the lens structure is uh, something called Petzval, which basically means that there are four elements, um, four lenses in three different groups. And from what I understand, it's basically you've got the two lenses that you would have in, say, a doublet telescope. But towards the back of the telescope, there are another two lenses responsible for correcting things like chromatic aberration um, and field flattening and things like that. Um, so the, the first point on that is, yes, you get a perfectly flat field view um, out of your telescope. You don't need to buy any field flatteners, any correctors or anything like that, which is why... That's another plus point uh, straight away in terms of that compared to the Skywatcher. Um, just to bear in mind that the ATED Pro and the the Red Cat are similar price points. Obviously different focal lengths, but they're similar price points, and I think the quality is much better with this. So 250 millimeters, uh, f ratio of 
uh, 4.9 it weighs about 1.8 kilos which is around about 3.2 pounds the the focuser i think i was a bit sort of concerned about whether or not this focuser would be any good because um i was used to the um the the focusers on on my other telescopes but that uh, if i just look, undo the lock so the focus itself um i'll show you in, in a close up as well um is is very fine fine tuned focusing it's very um it's got a scale at the top of the or around the actual focuser as well so you can see the finer points of where it is focused um but there's also a, a locking ring so once you've actually got it focused then you've got a nice locking ring there um it's called a, a calibrated helical focuser which um yeah i should probably look at what that actually means but <laughs> I'm not really too bothered about that. It works. I forgot to mention actually on the focuser itself, the action of the focuser is really, really smooth and it feels really precise. Um, my previous experience using uh, my zoom lens, which is a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 uh, zoom lens, was the focuser just wasn't, there was a little bit of play in it and it just didn't, it was really challenging to get focused. And I think it was a a bit of a concern when I first looked at how you would focus this particular uh, telescope, um, but actually having used it hands-on, no concerns whatsoever. There's no play in the focuser. Um, you make the slightest movement and that changes the focus immediately. And when, she, when you're finished, you lock it off and then it doesn't matter if it gets knocked because it won't get knocked out of focus. So that's a really good feature too. <music> So onto the overall build and how it was packaged and, and how it came and everything. So um, the, the telescope came in, in its own sort of carry case, um, a, a bucket load of padding. Um, it was all wrapped up in plastic and yeah, very, very well um, protected from a delivery standpoint. Um, but also from when you actually want to take it out into the field uh, rather than just in your back garden, you can put it in the case and you know that it's protected. Um, my one little niggle at the moment is um, once you've got the um, the sort of handle mounted at the top, uh, this one here, um, it, it doesn't fit anymore. And also if you stick a camera on the back, that doesn't fit as well. So what you have to do is, is start to sort of cut away some of that, that foam, which, which isn't a problem. Um, but I think also what I'd like to do is once I've got my um, scope set up, I want to actually keep it set up. So the carry case is a little bit small, um, but I can see why they've done it that way. Um, it, it would have been nice if it was a little bit bigger for the, the camera to be put on the back, but in all honesty, I don't think you're going to be able to support that because some people might be using filter wheels and it's, you're never going to get a good match there. Um, another piece that I really like about um, this scope is, um, and you probably know, or you might know, is the um, the lens cap itself. Cool little cap on there. Um, that's not the bit that I want to talk about, is when you unscrew the front of the lens cap, inside the, uh, the lens cap itself is a Batonov mask. Um, really, really nice feature, um, just to know that you've always got a Batonov mask. Um, I think it's a particular frustration again when I uh, first started getting into this that you go, oh, hang on a minute, focusing's a bit a bit challenging and a bit of a pain. Um, oh, I've got to go out and buy a Basimov mask. With this, you don't need to. So that's another, I don't know, 10, 20 pounds um, saved by having that in there. And you've always got it with you, which is great. Um, a minor thing as well inside the, uh, the cap itself is a bit of felt and it just slides really nicely onto the uh, onto the dew shield itself uh, so i quite like that feature as well the other good thing about the scope and what comes with it is the uh, is the mount bar itself so uh, see kind of from there you've got um, an odd shaped sort of vixen mount uh, bar so that's what i've got the vixen one that i'm using that at the moment um, but you can see this little notch here at the uh, at the top and um, that means that you can basically turn this plate round and you've got an arc swiss um, mount as well as a vixen mount which i think is a really nice touch um thing that i really love from this scope and i wish every single one of them um, actually does it is on the back of the scope you can see um, some numbers here and uh, those numbers are basically like 360 degree markers 
Uh, there's a little arrow on there. Um, and when you rotate the camera, there's a little locking screw that um, allows you to lock it in place. When you uh, rotate it, uh, you then know how many degrees round it is. So if you then move on to a different target, but then you want to go back to another target at some point in time, just note it down. You know exactly where you need to go. Um, on all of my other scopes, I have to use bits of tape and stuff like that to remember where it was which <laughs> over the year won't really work too well because you'll need many different pieces of tape and you'll need to keep them on there and never come off. So love that feature. Every telescope should have that. So uh, moving on to the actual lens itself and the speed. Um, so yeah, this is a, um, a 4.9 focal ratio uh, telescope. It's not it's not massively fast, but it's also not that slow either from, from my perspective. It's not your RASA 8 sort of F2 um, crazy fast telescopes, but it's also not that price point either. Um, given this is around about, uh, I think it was 600 pounds, maybe 700 pounds. Um, it's a good compromise and it's reasonably fast. I think the, the difference between this and, again, looking at my um, Canon zoom lens is when you have the zoom lens open at f2.8, yep, it's faster, but you end up getting these really strange sort of, um, I don't even know what they're really called, but the stars, they're not round. Uh, they've got some kind of odd little flares coming out at different angles away from the edge of the um, edge of the lens itself. Um, you could then stop it down to um, say f4 or something like that so it's a bit faster than this and then you get some some odd looking um, diffraction spikes from the uh, the, the aperture um, blades so it, it doesn't really look that nice and, and this the stars are beautifully round they're pinpoint sharp um, all the way to the edges of the frame um, it's full frame uh, sensor capable uh, this scope as well so all of those things in terms of the field flatteners and, and making sure that the image is properly flat and the stars are round edge to edge, um, I've found this has been really, really good. Um, one thing that did catch me out with this telescope, and it's more of a, a just a learning activity and not it's not a criticism of the scope at all, um, is because it's a different focal length. Um, all of the cameras that I had so far, so <laughs> seem to be collecting them, uh, the ASI uh, 533MC Pro and the ASI 1600MM Pro. Um, there are issues with that focal length and the sensor size or the pi pixel size of those um, sensors, meaning that um, it would actually suffer with, um, what is it, undersampling, um, which it essentially results in your stars looking a bit sort of blocky or pixelated or, or the larger stars are squarer. Um, so I ended up sort of uh, doing some research, trying to find a, a suitable camera that would work with this particular uh, telescope and settled with the ASIA 183 um, MC Pro. So it's a one shot color camera that I've got on here. Uh, but that's definitely matched up to the focal length and get some really, really nice images out of that combination. I think I'll just um, sort of finish off before summarising um, kind of the setup that I do have here. Um, so I've managed to get everything pretty much all onto, onto one, all self-contained in here. The only cables that I'm going to get coming off um, this device and this setup is the power cable going into the um, the ASI air device um, power and the telescope mount connector coming out of the ASI air into the mount and then I've got a, a single cable from a, a dew heater perspective um, it's another one I seem to seem to buy these things USB um, uh, dew heaters but it's got nicely two cables going into one splitter or one connector um, and you just need one um, USB power supply for that. Um, everything else fits really nicely onto um, onto the, the handle itself. I think to be fair, they probably could sell this handle as part of the actual scope itself. I think without it, you're really limiting yourself. Where on earth do you put the guide scope, for example? Um, but yeah, I've got a ZWO um, was it 30F4 um, mini scope. 
and the a ASI 120mm Mini um, as a guide camera in here. Um, it's a little bit fiddly to just set up initially to get it in focus, but once it's in focus and you locked everything off, um, it works really well. Uh, so no, no issues there at all. And yeah, just kind of um, dealing with sort of cables and just kind of tying them up so that they're, they're all out of the way. Um, and it's a really nice uh, solid setup. You can see here as well, I've also got the dew heater connected to the, uh, the main imaging camera as well and hidden around the back. <laughs> eventually very professionally done um you've got the uh filter drawer there as well so i can just change swapping in and out either a, uh, an optolong l pro light pollution filter um or the l extreme uh, to do hoo uh, type imaging um so i think it's everything from a, a scope setup um there's some screws in the back as well to be able to do sort of tilt and shift if the sensor is not perfectly um, sort of perpendicular to the to the lens itself. Um, I've not noticed any problems at the moment, but it's there if, if need be. So I guess just, uh, just summarizing. Um, yeah, I said at the start why I think, I wanted to say why I think this is the best scope I've ever had. Um, it literally has to be um, solid build construction, really good design, Bassanoff mask in the in the lens hood that I find works really well for me. Um, the rotation markers um, on the back of the, the the telescope as well that I can remember where things were at when I was um, changing the orientation for composition, um, and just how everything fits really nicely on on this setup, and it's. Uh, lightweight, compact. It can go on my Star Adventure Pro mount. It can go on my EQ6R uh, Pro mount. Um, there's there's no issues there at all. It <laughs> it's a minor point. It looks really good as well. Um, certainly, seeing as it's all all kind of color coordinated, so you you, know, you can definitely tell that I'm a bit of a uh, a ZWO fanboy here with um, literally all um, ZWO equipment on here, but the red and the black just goes really nicely. So, um, and also their products I find work really well too. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you're in the market for this, I've not been paid for this video in any way, shape or form, but if you're in the market for a scope around this kind of uh, focal length, then definitely give this a, a look. So that's all I'm gonna say for now. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much for all of uh, the subscribers that I have on my channel now. Um, really, really pleased. Thank you very much for subscribing. It's really appreciated. Um, and yeah, leave leave some some comments in the uh, comment section below. Let you know of your or let us know of your thoughts if you've got one. What you think of it? Um, and also, if you've got any critiques, any comments about the uh, the scope, then put those in there as well, so we can have a bit of a discussion. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, um, hit subscribe and hit the bell. So uh, leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching and clear skies.